Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and in this video what we're going to be doing is going over my five favorite Linux distributions of the year 2020. Now this is a response to the video that DistroTube put out on this same subject. He is one of my favorite Linux YouTubers, and I'll have the video linked down below, so if you don't know about his channel or you haven't seen that video, you could go ahead and check it out after this one. But this isn't going to be like the stereotypical uh, top 5, top 10 list where there's generally a reason like the top 10 Linux distributions for Windows users. It's not going to be one of those. This is just my personal favorites. And what I'm going to do is run down five of them, give you some of the reasons why I like them, and maybe some of the reasons why, um, well, some faults for some of these Linux distributions. Most, but not all of these Linux distros I did check out on the channel at some point. So if you do want to look down below to get more of a in-depth overview over some of these, you could check out videos on them. There are a couple that I didn't and I will be getting into that in just a minute. It is important to note that I am not really ranking these, so these are in no particular order because I do like these for wildly different reasons and to actually put these in a tier list order would be kind of difficult. And during the course of this video at any time, if you want to leave your top five Linux distributions down below, or maybe your one or two favorite distros, please leave them in the comments down below. That would be absolutely awesome to see. So the first one I'm gonna be talking about is Solus. Solus at the moment is bordering my favorite Linux distribution. And I did just check this out in my previous video where I went over some benchmarking of it. And that is one of the reasons why I like it. It is a outstanding performer uh, in most situations that you give it. it. The boot speed is incredible. The hardware utilization is awesome. It overall is a great Linux distribution. Um, one of the cons is there, it's a pro and a con at the same time is their software repositories. It's a con because there's not that much stuff available, but it's a pro because everything that is available is gonna work flawlessly and for a rolling release distribution that is outstanding. I've recently installed this on my primary laptop and I do use that laptop quite frequently whenever my fiance is using this machine to do homework, things like that. I'm on that laptop running Solus and so far it has been a wonderful experience. I will note an issue that I had was with a NVIDIA card. I had a 1650 in this PC right here, and for the life of me, I could not get it to boot. I was on Reddit trying to figure out solutions and forms, and just nothing would work. So to do my last video, I actually ended up picking up a budget uh, AMD graphics card just to be able to boot into Solus and use that. And coming from somebody who might be new to Linux, if Solus was the first thing you tried out and you tried it on a NVIDIA card, you, you might just think Linux sucks and it's broken and there's nothing you could do. And that's not really a good look. So it would be nice if Solus did something like what Pop! OS does and offers a ISO with those NVIDIA drivers built in. And that actually takes us to the next one on our list and that is Pop! OS. And I like Pop! OS for a number of reasons and the first thing I'm going to mention is System76, the company itself is a wonderful company that is really moving the Linux environment forward on both the hardware side and especially the software and distribution side. Like I said, they have the ISO that has the NVIDIA drivers built in, which is awesome. Uh, Pop! OS is one of the few distributions that works perfectly out of the box with hybrid uh, graphics cards, so a laptop that has a dedicated GPU and a CPU with graphic drivers. And you could go back and forth and Generally, it works perfectly fine. And then when you look at the actual Linux distribution, it's really just a perfect version of Ubuntu. It's Ubuntu based, you probably know this, but they got that Ubuntu base and took out any of the chronicle bloatware and garbage, added in good driver support. So one of the main reasons a lot of people start with Pop! OS or go to Pop! OS, other than the fact it's widely recommended, is the fact it just works. It's a great Ubuntu distribution that's going to work on all your machines. The software it comes with is fairly limited, but they have the Pop! Shop, which is a great um, uh, app center, so to speak, uh, that they borrow from elementary OS that you could go ahead and download all your packages. It's super friendly to use, and it features a ton of different software in there. And the only real negative of Pop! OS that I can think about is it's not too friendly from a uh, visual or from the actual desktop environment standpoint. It is known, but they even went further and stripped out a couple little things that might be discouraging to somebody who's new, such as the minimize maximize button. That's just one example, but you could go ahead and just get GNOME tweaks and fix that. 
And now, after I've used it for quite a while before I installed Solace on the laptop, I was using Pop OS, I just did a simple change where I right click on the uh, title bar and it'll minimize it, and if I double click on it, it will maximize it. So that issue was solved. And that brings us to number three, my current pride and joy. <laughs> Uh, that is Manjaro. I've been using Manjaro as my daily driver on this desktop machine. All the videos I make are produced on it. I'm recording the audio on Manjaro right now. I think I've been using it for about five or six months or so, and I have had hardly any issues with it at all. I'm one who likes a rolling release distribution, so I like to play around and tinker with all the new different features, kernels, things like that test things out and this allows me to do that and it also has the arch base so I could go ahead and use the uh, pac-man commands to get a lot of the stuff uh, the Manjaro package manager PadMac is awesome includes the arch user repositories so Manjaro is basically a user-friendly polished version of arch with a bunch of extra stuff to help somebody get along and actually use the system efficiently. And I am using the Plasma version of Manjaro, the KDE Plasma, because I like the whole customization. Being able to change everything around, I'm an absolute fan of KDE, as well as all their other software. And as Manjaro progresses, they are coming out with a lot of really cool features. And then there's other projects, such as their operating system for the Pine phone. Overall, I just really like Manjaro and the Manjaro team and what they're doing with it. And next is the fourth one I'm going to talk about, and that is Endeavor OS. Now, out of everything I'm going to mention here, this is the one I actually have the least amount of experience with, but I've recently started tinkering around with this because I'm using it as a tool to kind of learn Arch. It's really good because it's basically Manjaro without all the extra crap. Endeavor is simply a Arch-based distribution that is completely stripped out, it has everything you need, so it's not like running an actual Arch install where you're going to need to go and pull all the different components and drivers and everything like that. It works out of the gate, but it's stripped down so you do get that experience in an Arch system without having to work too hard and spend too much time setting it up. And I have noticed Manjaro performs great, but Endeavor seems to perform a little bit better, probably because it doesn't have all the extra crap that Manjaro has on it. And I say crap in kind of a mindset of an Arch-based user who uses Arch, by the way. But I actually like a lot of the crap that comes with Manjaro. It, it doesn't really bog down the system too much. But I'm going to keep playing with Endeavor, and I might actually eventually switch to it on this primary desktop machine that I use. But at the moment, I'm almost thinking about putting Solace on it and running with that for a while and seeing how that works out. And this will take us to the very last distribution that I'm going to be mentioning, and that is OpenSUSE. I ran OpenSUSE for a couple weeks or so, and it is a magnificent operating system. It's rock solid. It just works. Everything's super snappy and fast. If you saw my uh, benchmarking video where I included OpenSUSE, it completely destroyed a lot of the other distributions that it was going up against. And the entire time I was using it, I actually had zero issues. There's a couple things I had to learn but actual issues and issues with the software, there was absolutely none of that. Another thing I really enjoyed about it is the package manager. I'm kind of forgetting the name of it. I only used it for a little while, but it, it, it has kind of an older look to it, but the amount of packages in it is crazy. There's, there's a lot of stuff in it, and it's really easy to just go ahead and build packages from that package manager install updates and everything but the main reason i do like this is just the performance it's it's a great it's a really old operating system i remember the first time i got involved not involved but the very first time i started using open was there used to be a thing called um, uh, i think it was SUS or SUSE studio where you could kind of play around and make your own linux distribution uh, kind of customize it tweak it and download an iso of your custom uh, Linux distribution. So if you remember that, or if you're somebody who ever used that, let me know down below. That was quite a long time ago, so that'd be interesting if anybody knows what I'm talking about. But ultimately, that does wrap up my favorite Linux distributions that I used throughout the year 2020. Again, this video was inspired by DistroTube's video on the same subject. Most of his distributions were different from mine, so go ahead and check that out. You might see some distributions that you want to check out and learn about. And again, please go ahead down below, leave a comment with your five favorite distributions, or if you don't have a um, problem like I do with distro hopping, leave what your favorite Linux distribution is, or maybe what one you've been using recently that you like quite a bit down below in the description. I look forward to seeing all of those. Like this video if you do. If you hate it, uh, dislike it. 
subscribe for more content like this. I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.